How SpaceX mastered Starship's welding Elon Musk and SpaceX just shocked the entire space industry with their insane manufacturing and welding techniques. When it comes to space exploration, a problem exists. Space is way too big, but the amazing engineers at SpaceX have found a solution. They've produced a rocket, which due to its new welding techniques and superior design can reach the depths of the never-ending space. Today we're going to talk about the amazing new welding techniques SpaceX has adopted. How does this help them in their quest to reach other planets such as Mars? How far have they come from the original Starship design? Well, stick around till the end as we answer these questions. So let's begin the video. To better understand the welding innovations SpaceX overtook for its signature Starship spacecraft, we first need to understand its design from the start, and later, how due to new and improved technology, it became better, both in terms of performance and the aesthetic aspect of the spacecraft. Starship wasn't always going to appear like a sci-fi rocket from the 1940s. It was designed to be built of carbon fiber from the start. Carbon fiber is extraordinarily strong, and since it's also light in weight, this felt like the most natural plan to use carbon fiber as the main material for Starship. As a result, when a stainless steel Starship arrived, everyone was taken aback. Why did Musk opt for a material that is not as structurally sound as carbon fiber? What was the reason that it was replaced with stainless steel? However, as time passed, we began to understand what a wise decision they had made. Although carbon fiber is extremely strong, it begins to degrade at temperatures of roughly 200 degrees. During spaceflight, when the spacecraft is leaving or entering Earth's atmosphere, it has to pass through at extremely high speeds, especially whilst entering as the gravitational pull results in even more heat produced. Since temperatures rise to 1600 degrees around this time, a switch in the material was needed to facilitate this. Furthermore, stainless steel is also far less expensive than carbon fiber, costing only $3 per kilogram against $150. This would somewhat lessen the financial burden, considering Musk already spent millions on the project. However, this isn't the first stainless steel rocket. NASA built one out of very thin stainless steel in the 1960s, and it worked. If NASA can do it, Musk can do it better. Now, let's consider the scenario in which SpaceX has opted for carbon fiber. To make carbon composites, the fibers must be layered in a certain pattern for the material to be strong in all directions. The composites must then be cured in a massive pressure oven. SpaceX would require a larger oven than anything now available to accommodate the Starship's 9-meter broad parts. Thus, if it was possible, it would result in lots of money being spent. Why spend so much when you have a readily available cheap alternative? Speaking of a cheap alternative, stainless steel excelled in this area. It may be put together in a short amount of time, utilizing the most basic and cost-effective approaches. Apart from being a cheaper material, stainless steel was also cheaper to assemble, so double the benefit. As a result, it was decided that stainless steel would be used, and SpaceX began construction on the spacecraft. Now let us discuss the superior welding techniques used in the making of Starship, and what role did it play in its design and function? Welding was one of the most difficult aspects of the first Starship prototypes. Each ring was originally constructed from numerous sheets of 301 stainless steel that were roughly 4.5 millimeters thick. It would be very difficult to weld these layers into one body. Initially, the welding standards were not up to par. SpaceX had to invest in a better welding team or equip them with the necessary skills so that they could do their job more effectively. The early Starship prototypes used a flux core welding process. This process involves passing a voltage through a metallic wire, which creates an arc between it and the metal, melting it. The metal wire's tip melts and falls into the molten stainless steel, filling any gaps or air bubbles. The metal wire is surrounded by a solid substance that burns and releases a protective gas surrounding the weld during the flux core welding. This shields the weld against corrosion by preventing it from interacting with the oxygen in our atmosphere. However, there is a catch. When you're in a controlled environment, this works nicely. It would be the main method of welding in normal circumstances. However, we're forgetting that they didn't have a factory, only a large tent. Most of the welding was done by welders with no rocket experience. If you look at the photos of the first Mark I prototype, the welds were extensively rusted, with surface fractures and rough edges. SpaceX began polishing these welds down until they were flat with the surface in an attempt to enhance them. 
This might seem like a scheme to make the craft look shinier for the public. We all thought that initially. However, upon closer inspection, we learn otherwise. When the starship is pressurized, these sharp edges and microscopic cracks act as pressure points, potentially leading to a much larger crack. As a result, grinding the surface eradicated these flaws, lowering the risk of a weld failure. Each weld should theoretically be as robust as the surrounding material. However, the initial Starship test revealed that it was not the case. When one of the horizontal welds on the bulk had failed, Mark I exploded and thus the test failed. It was obvious a change in material and welding methods were needed. As a result, SpaceX made some significant changes to the next Starship prototype. Each ring was now produced from thinner stainless steel single sheets, requiring far less welding. They also switched the type of stainless steel used, using far more corrosion-resistant materials when it was welded. They also switched to a different type of welding, the tip TIG welding, which provided them better control over the welding arc and allowed the welder to weld much deeper into the metal. This resulted in less warping of the surrounding metal. With these changes, SpaceX was able to bring in modern welding methods, resulting in cleaner and more exact welds. So, you guys enjoying the video? Here comes another challenge. How can you manage to better a craft that you already think is good enough? Welding's been sorted, but is there any more you can identify and make better on craft? What more changes are needed? Furthermore, they also started adding stringers to the inside of the Starship's hull to prevent the metal from collapsing under its weight. This issue is also a major aspect of the failures in early tests. SpaceX, on the other hand, did not stop there. They continued to redesign and introduce more modern and better methods to the Starship. Keeping that in mind, a procedure was needed to perfect its structural integrity. Starship stainless steel undergoes a process known as cold rolling. This is accomplished by running the metal through a succession of rollers that compress and stretch the metal grains. This strengthens and hardens the substance, making it more durable for flight. However, when Starship is welded, the heat softens the metal in that place again. This is where SpaceX's massive planishing machine enters the picture. What is planishing, you may ask? Planishing is the process of compressing and hammering welds until they match the hardness of the surrounding metal, thus nullifying the softness issue. In terms of aesthetics, this also made the spacecraft shiny and somewhat good-looking. We've covered all the necessary changes that the Starship has undertaken since its early days. If you have any more questions regarding the subject matter, do let us know in the comments section. One does not simply glance skyward and see the never-ending space and think that exploring all of it is impossible. For some, this will always remain a dream. However, modern techniques have enabled companies such as SpaceX to make that dream a reality. Soon, spacecraft would be so structurally strong that travel to Mars would not just remain a far-fetched dream. So, are you excited to see how Starship will turn out in the end? Will the new welding methods work? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to watch more of our amazing videos, then stay tuned.